today we'll be um, painting a dream catcher okay so I shared some examples some photos um, you can use them as inspiration of course you can totally create your own I, I actually encourage you to create your own design it's fun and it'll be your very own dream catcher watercolor painting okay so um, these are the examples you can see okay so today's prompt for world watercolor month is entwined so i decided on um ch uh, the cream catcher because it's um it's a fully woven piece that's um just full of beautiful meaning so um we're gonna do that today all right so before we start um i'm gonna show you my i'm gonna flip the camera down and then um, show you my I already pre-sketched it so all right I'm gonna flip it down now so you can see it okay and then okay first let's start with our sketch of course you sketch your dream catcher I really used um I used a round object and just traced around it and then um, you, I also have this plate with a nice, it, it looks like a dream catcher design as well. So beautiful. And then you can just, um, I decided on design with another ring in the middle and I just go all over. So I just set these dots on the side as the guide so that everything is um, spaced apart evenly. Okay, so you don't have to um, stress about it. You can prepare your spacing before you you trace back and forth like that and then below here You can choose whatever dangling um, Design you want I I did I went with three feathers and then tiny bit tiny ones here with some uh, beads Okay, and today of course you draw it on your um, watercolor paper a thick one so that it can take um, the wetness and then I'm going to use um, the Allegro, Allegro palette. Okay, I'm going to be uh, mixing warm and cool colors. And then um, a small mixing plate, just so if I want to create uh, mixtures. My swatch paper, as usual, where I can try out my mixtures or my um, colors if uh, I want it darker, lighter, it says okay. Okay, so this is very useful. Then a uh, paper towel for absorbing, for dabbing if I need to. And then water. Okay. And if you're going to sketch, of course, your pencil and your eraser. Okay, so I have my, my brushes here. Okay. Um, this is the Turner collection from Zen Art. So I already put it in a jar, but this actually comes in a in a satin case that um, will keep it organized and safe when you bring it along with you for um, traveling or when you're painting. Okay, so um, we're ready. Okay, let's start. So I'm first gonna go with uh, I'm gonna color this um, ring. Okay, so I'm gonna get my mid-sized brush, round brush. Okay. Wet your brush and then choose your color. Okay, so I'm gonna go with um, the yellow deep. Okay, I'm gonna create a warm, um, contrasting with the cooler colors down here. So I'm gonna first go around and do the ring. So just fill that in. So you can totally um, have fun with dream catchers. You can create different versions, different kinds, different colors. You can even create a more abstract one, more loose, loosely washed, loose style of painting. So this is a really um, fun subject to explore. So if you 
also like doing arts and crafts. Maybe you, you've even made your own dream catcher. Okay, so next, um, I'm just going to leave it here and then later I'm going to add a more deeper color. And in my middle part where they um, intertwine, um, there are beads. I don't know if you can really see it. I'm going to zoom closer. Okay. There. Okay. So there are beads here. But um, I'm first going to go and um, trace the, the cord all around. Okay. And I'm going to use. Okay, this color, it's a warm brown. Okay, so this color is burnt china. Okay, so I like it. It's like a reddish brown, warm brown. So I'm going to use that for the strings. Okay, so I'm going to start here in the middle and then just. Go across. You can switch to a smaller brush, okay, if that will make it easier for you. Okay, I think I'll try and do that. I'm gonna switch to my favorite rigger brush from our fine fine line collection. So let's see this one. Okay, so I like this brush because you can con you can. Um, paint lines continuously without having to um, re-dip a lot. It can hold a lot of, of pigment and water so it um, lasts you long. So for fine long lines this is um, perfect. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, I'm gonna make it darker. And then I'm just I'm just skipping over the bead. So you can totally choose your own colors, okay? Um, if you want a more um, greens and blues kind of um, dream catcher, if you want a really rainbow colored um, dream catcher, go ahead, okay? Do what you want to do. Um, this is just um, a guide but this is like one of the basic designs that you can do there are far more complicated designs of course but um, keeping it simple for now and then just twist around your paper if that's um, going to be easier okay it's easier if you're painting a small work it's easy to flip it around but if you're creating a bigger work then that's going to be much harder. So don't stress out about making your lines straight as you can. Okay, just get the design right, go around. I've actually never have never made a dream catcher yet, but um, I'd like to try making one. It's supposed to catch your um, good dreams and then block off the bad dreams. So some people like to hang this over their beds to keep their dreams happy and good I guess maybe it can also help you get um, good sleep because you know that the thought of having a dream catcher might bring you comfort so maybe if you can't weave you can just like paint one maybe it might work still Okay, so just going around 
actually when I was drawing this um, it felt really therapeutic like um, like meditative because of the pattern going back and forth so it's a uh, and then you don't really need to follow any specific reference so you can just have fun do whatever you want so I think um, this can be really very enjoyable then you can create your different designs and then now I'm tracing circle inside and I, I also like to add bumps here and there to, to show that it's been woven into a ring that's been covered by the strings you don't have to do that okay um, that's just me I just like to show that um, there's some weaving that went on so if you if you like you can darken some parts you can darken it now you can darken it later for now I just leave it like this okay and then uh, I'm gonna go back over the the ring and uh, use a darker dark yellow so I'm going to use um, gamboge and uh, mix it with a little bit of um, English red just to create the shadowing here okay I'm mix it on a different side of the pan let's use a bigger brush okay so gamboge so this is like a really golden, really deep, warm yellow. And then some English red. So English red, um, it, it's like a um, rusty kind of red, as you can see here. It's also very nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna okay, go over just on the sides. Okay, just to create some depth to this ring so it's not so flat. Okay, again, whichever colors you want to use um, that's up to you okay so what I do is I just apply it in the outer and then I clean my brush and then this is just like um, plain water I I'm diluting the mixture Keep this handy nearby so that you can easily remove excess water or excess pigment. Okay, so there's the ring. And now I'm going to go and um, allow that to dry because later I'm going to add the the weaving on the ring itself but let's let it dry first so that um, the lines will remain crisp and with no bleeding okay so now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to use the same um, color for the string wait I used this one okay so again that was um, burnt shenna Now I'm going to trace string.
you can also change the color of the string if you prefer that okay like I said earlier it's your design so it's up to you this is just my my own version where I just continue the same string okay and now um, I'm gonna go and do the, the feathers okay let me just okay wait, wait. There you go. Okay, so again, I used warm for the top, warmer colors, and now I'm going to use cooler colors down here. Okay. So I'm going to clean up some of the color that got splattered here. So I'm going to be mixing some cooler shades. So let's see. I'm gonna use um, turquoise, okay? And I think it really goes great with this warm yellows. Okay, so let's use turquoise. So I'm gonna wet first the feather. I'm gonna start with the biggest one. I'm gonna wet it so that when I apply the color, it's gonna be soft and spreading. Okay, and then I'm gonna add another color, the viridian, like green, this one. So I'm gonna mix them to the both. Okay, so for the texture later, um, I'm just gonna add draw on top of it once the paper is dry. I'm going to use uh, a pen to draw on top of it. Okay, so if you'd like, you can also create um, like the sides. Okay, like the feather feathering on the edges. You don't have to, um, only if you'd like to. Okay, so in my case, I'm going to add that detail make it look like feather okay so I'm basically just getting um, paint from here and spreading it out of the edges okay so down with one feather I'm going to continue that color here so same same way I'm gonna first wet it. Okay, just wet this area of the feather and then get my turquoise. Okay, paint that here. And then when you paint on wet on a wet surface, it blooms. The color blooms and you'll see the, the side is not crisp. And it was if you add another color next to it, it's just gonna blend together just naturally because of the wet surface. Okay, so if you like that effect, then wet and wet is the way to go. But if you prefer crisper edges, then you should um, paint on a dry surface. So experiment, okay? So sometimes you want the effect of the wet and wet, but sometimes you also want the accuracy of the wet and dry. So to find out which ones um, you like for a specific technique or a specific subject, um, just try it out. Okay, so that's another feather done. I'm gonna go to the other one now. Again, I have to wet first. Then go back again to turquoise on top. And then switch to Viridian. Then 
I'm just putting them right next to each other so that they just um, beautifully blend. Okay, and then I'm going to work on the sides to add the feather-like edges. Okay, and there you go. So now I have two little ones here. I think I'm going to use um, French Ultramarine because it's like a warmer warmer kind of blue. Okay. Sometimes it looks a little bit purpley. And for this one, I didn't um, do wet and wet anymore because I'm just going to use one color. Okay, and now I'm going to go back here and continue with my um, beads now. Okay, so I'm going to use um, turquoise and viridian. Okay, let me count it first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to use... Here. Okay. Skip that. Again, I just like to do a contrasting color combination, so that's why for this warm top, I used um, cooler colored beads. But if you want everything to be a particular um, color combination, go ahead, do, do what makes you happy. Okay, it's your own dream capture. Okay, if you hear snorting, that's my dog, so <laughs> pardon. Any one of you have dogs? Okay, so now I'm going to go and switch to Viridian for the other beads. So it's really very, I mean, um, I find it therapeutic right now. I, I'm i actually enjoying this and I think I'm going to create other more um, dream catchers. It's kind of like making a painting a mandala a little bit. You have one naughty boy. <laughs> oh well, boys have really a lot of energy. I have I had an old dog before who passed away, but he was such a hyperactive boy. But dogs really are the best. There's never a boring day with a dog. They get into all sorts of trouble. Okay, so. I'm going to leave it like that and I like it. Okay. So now I'm going to continue it here. Um, here I'm just going to mix around with the, with the colors here. I'm going to use um, blues, purples, 
okay so just have fun relax play around okay um think of this as like a relaxing uh, exercise and you can totally just do this more abstract more um, fluid just um, play around with it so i'm gonna go back to a turquoise stood here i'm just doing this intuitively so it's up to you okay um i just uh planned on uh, a warm and cool palette you can totally plan your palette ahead swatch them out and see if you like how the colors look like together so that um you don't regret anything but you can never go wrong with using the contrasting colors because um, that's one of the color harmonies okay but remember when you're mixing your colors um, the more colors that you mix um, the muddier they get okay so uh, try to limit your uh, color mixing to two to three colors the more that you mix together the dirtier it becomes and don't use white unless uh, you're fine with um, with the work turning a little bit opaque-ish because white is, uh, is, a, is an opaque color so when you mix it when you have a white watercolor and you mix it in your mixture it's gonna remove the transparency of watercolors so now I'm gonna go and get some Viridian I like Viridian it's a it's a deep deep green a, a cool kind of green The Impressionists also like this, uh, had Viridian in their palettes. Okay, so I'm just uh, choosing randomly where to put the, the colors. And then I'm gonna use the ultramarine because it's like a purpley blue and it's nice. Okay, so just take your time. And um, you can even add extra details if you want along the way. Oh, you feel like, oh, I think I want to add more beads and feathers or anything. Well, you can totally still do that. I mean, you can even add extra dangling stuff. So go ahead and do that. Just um, play around with it. Okay. And then for just a little bit of pop, I'm just going to add um, red, the English red here and there. So what I like about this exercise is it's uh, pretty soothing relaxing no frills you know you can just um, totally experiment with it i'm gonna add a little bit of color here extra color darken this a bit
Okay, so this is also one of those perfect times to experiment and you can totally layer and just have fun. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to here and add the, the weaving. Okay, bring this closer. Add some more pigment. So I'm just going to add where there's some weaving going on. This is where the string is attached. Details like that. Okay. After all, the prompt is entwined. So let's, let's show some entwining going on. Then I'm just going to fix this, okay, darken it. Just going to go over it again. The, a lot of dream catchers are usually um, like white or off-white cream though I do see some that are have dark threads and some that are not um, really exactly circular so you can even do that a more organic um, looking trim catcher if you like here I just like to explore the Allegro palette with it's like beautiful colors I really love this rigor brush like it's it's long and thin yet it doesn't get deformed easily it just snaps back into shape so you have like really great control this would actually be great for if you're gonna do like calligraphy watercolor calligraphy So don't um, don't stress out if your lines don't go um, where you want them to go exactly. Okay. Just take your time and enjoy the process. Enjoy your dream catcher. Especially if it's your first time creating one. Okay. So now I'm, I'd like to add like weaving as well over here. I just want to add that detail. I think it would look nice. You can also do the whole thing like you wove the, 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 the cord all around if you want to add really a very detailed way if you have the patience for it go ahead I think I like that. OK. 
everything and I almost forgot about this part in the, at the top so I'm gonna add now the the extended cord where you'll be hanging your dream catcher from okay and then again continue with the bead there let's go with the turquoise mixed with viridian let's mix them both Okay, there you go. And you can totally add um, background if you want. Okay, so it's up to you. You can leave it as is, or you can add background and um, create uh, extra texture, detail, whatever. Okay, so let's say um, in my case, I'm just going to add um, color, a little bit color down here. So I'm just going to wet this. All around so I want a more just a relaxed color okay so I'll uh, just do do this kind of wet and wet uh, if your paper can hold can stand it or if you were able to pre stretch your paper like really um, well so I'm gonna use phthalo blue I'm going to dilute it. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of um, Violet, okay. Oops, okay, so that was a mistake. <laughs> so maybe I'll add splatters since I've splattered it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to add some purple, like I've mentioned. And now I'm just really gonna dilute it. Okay, blend it out a little bit. And then I'd like to leave white spaces. Okay. I also like that um, that look, that effect. So I'm going to leave the top um, relatively um, clear. Okay, so that's the magic of wet and wet. It's just your colors just blend together beautifully. And you get like the natural flow of of the colors and uh, it's very unpredictable and sometimes you just really end up with beautiful uh, beautiful textures so also explore um, the wet and wet technique and how how you can create just magical textures Okay, so I like to leave uh, little bits of white spaces around so that um, the feathers seem to even pop out more. Okay, and like I said earlier, I just blend it really here on top. Okay, so I'm going to add really light mixes here and there. Showing through, but I want to keep this 
top part more um, fairly clear with too much background color because so I want the focus to be on the weaving Add some blue as well. So remember, watercolor is really about your water control. Okay, so how you control your water will um, be a big factor to how how your colors blend, how they pop out, or how they how you dilute them, how you control them. Okay, so keep practicing and experimenting, and you'll get your own style and your own process. Okay, each each artist has his or her own process, and. That's what makes it special. Some some really like to paint really very cleanly with really crisp lines, and some are more experimental. Okay, so find out what you like, what you want to paint. Okay. So, um, since there's some splatter, let's do some splattering, <laughs> since I already mistakenly did that. Okay, let's... Okay, I'm going to use uh, another brush factor brush so that it can hold more water. And just tap. Okay, then I'm going to also add some purple just to continue that color, background color combination. So I'm just tapping it against my other finger. Okay, you can also do this, okay. But a, a, a brush with a thicker belly can will hold more pigment okay so there you go and then I'm just gonna go over this part just add extra shadows spray some water as well just to let out the some of the splatters that are just too black okay so it's all gonna also gonna create this nice texture okay experiment away okay try out the different ways that you can Create texture.
Okay. So, um, of course, it's going to depend on how 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 thick your paper is, how much water it can handle. Okay. Because if your paper is pretty thin and then you keep wetting it, um, it's going to really um, curl. Okay. So now um, I'm just going to wait for it to dry up. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm just adding um, shadowing here and there just to make this more solid. Okay, and now I'm gonna use my uh, blow dryer. Because normally I would just wait for this really like naturally and come back in a few hours and then go over it. But um, just to show you, so I'm gonna blow dry it so that it's dry and I can keep working. Okay, so there will be some noise. I was just drawing the, the section with the, the feather because I'm going to draw, draw over that. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to use this uh, Jelly Roll pen. Okay, and then do the texture of the feather. Okay, so let's do that. Is it dry? So that's why I was pro drying it. And I'm just going to do the. This will be cleaner looking if it's really very dry. So I'm just adding the, the lines and the texture of the feather. So I don't have to like draw every line, just the general idea. Okay, and then I move here. So of course the drier this is, the better your lines will come out. You can also use go wash for this with a nice thin brush. Or if you want, you can also use a black pen. You can also try with that um, style. Oh, and then I just realized something. I'm just gonna make this this feather darker. Because right now it's blending to 
too much to the background and I want it to pop out. Now I'm going to add over the, the beads as well, just to add extra detail. Okay, again, you can use gouache for this. But adding extra details really adds more depth to your work, like for the feathers especially. Of course, you can also just um, use a deeper color and just do the lines if you want. So there you go. I think I'm also going to make this a little bit deeper like this here. So let me just splatter a little bit here. Okay. And then spray so that it spreads a bit. Okay. Then you can feel free to move your paper around. Okay. If you want to spread it. Any way you can control it. Okay, and you can also use your brush to control the flow. Okay, so this is my very quick one sitting dream catcher. Okay, so feel free to um Play around with the colors that you'd like to use, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, you can draw a pen over it, a white pen, black pen, or other any other color you like. Just um, uh, play around and experiment. And uh, please share your own works. I'd love to see okay, I'd love to see your own versions. So share away. And... Um, I'll see you again um, next time. Okay, let me just flip the camera back up. Okay, and then zoom out. I'm so zoomed in. Okay, so this is my really quick um, dream catcher. Okay, so um, make your own and um, share when you're finished. I'd love to see your own version, and um, I hope you enjoyed this class. It's a pretty um, just relaxing, just play around with um, sort of class where you can just, as you can see, I used a spray bottle, I splattered, wet and wet. Just play around with all the um, different techniques that you want to explore because this is the perfect time to do it. So the next time I'm actually going to try making a more wash, more abstract um, style. So. Uh, I'll see you in the next one and have a good day. Bye. Thank you.